Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Return to Play. I'm Brandon Hodnett. Today, I am joined by Julian Levin from the Swarthmore men's basketball team. Julian, how's it going? Hey, Brandon. It's going great. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Julian, can you uh, tell our listeners where you're calling in from today? I am uh, calling in from summer camp. So I'm uh, in charge of uh, the 15 year olds at a summer camp, uh, half an hour south from half an hour south of Gettysburg. Um, so I'm here pretty much the entire summer. Uh, very exciting, very fun uh, leadership training, uh, just regular camp activities. So yeah, it's been a great summer so far. The campers wearing you out? No, honestly, not really. I mean, it, it's, it's constant work, but with the 15 year olds, it's a lot of fun to be able to really like talk with them and hang out with them and get to know them. So uh, it's kind of refreshing in a way if after the uh, two years of uh, almost two years of COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Julian, what are you studying at Swarthmore? So I am a uh, bio major with a psych minor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's been you know, one of the most interesting program or uh, classes that you've taken at Swarthmore? Uh, the most interesting class I've taken uh, in my time at SWAT by far has to be uh, quantitative paleontology with uh, uh, Steve Wong, uh, basically statistical paleontology. So looking at uh, um, extinction rates, uh, um, evolutionary rates, uh, using all these different like statistical methods uh, along with uh, paleontological findings. So uh, bone measurements, stuff like that. Uh, to really determine how exactly like organisms have evolved and uh, gone extinct, it was it was really fascinating. Like, they, like finding the the connections between between the two and using these new like methods to really discover some new things. It was very very interesting. Yeah, well, that's very cool. Were there uh, any on site digs or anything, or just just all statistical? <laughs> yeah, so no on site digs, but. Uh, it was a, like a good chunk of bio. So we, we actually got to go into uh, one of the bio professors uh, labs uh, and we got to pretty much spend an entire class period uh, just like exploring and spending time with her organisms in her lab um, because those were some of the organisms that we had uh, talked about in class. And I mean, that was fascinating to, to, to talk about them and how they've evolved from like millions of years ago and to see them present day was just, I mean, hmm. amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Julian, let's, let's rewind to the last time we saw you, uh, Swarthmore men's basketball having best season in program history, um, you know, ready for the, the sweet 16, um, what was, first of all, what was that run like for you, the 2019-2020 the season? It was, it was fantastic. I mean, being able to do what we did with the group of guys that we did it with, I mean, there, there, was, there was nothing better. It, it's the tightest team that I've ever been on. Um, and we were really just playing up to our expectations, um, setting the standards for ourselves. And I mean, that was incredibly fulfilling, being able to, to, to say that we were reaching our goals and doing what we had to do. Um, and so having that opportunity to not only like play at a high level, but also like grow closer with uh, every single guy on the team. I mean, it was incredibly, incredibly fulfilling. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, this was after a year where you guys had been to the national championship game. Tell me about that experience for you. It was surreal. I mean, it was something we had uh, worked towards getting to. Um, and when we actually made it to the final four and got to travel to Fort Wayne, I mean, it was unlike anything I had ever seen. I don't think the, the stage didn't frazzle us, but we were just excited to be there um, and to compete. Uh, and I mean, it was, it was truly, truly, I mean, one of the most exciting basketball moments that I've ever had. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Getting, uh, getting to play in a national championship game. That's incredible. Yeah. All those fans and everything. Um, so 2020, 
looking like the year that Swarthmore could win the national championship, not only, you know, get back to it, but win the champ national championship. Uh, we're getting ready for the sweet 16. We're starting to hear news about this COVID thing. There's talks about, you know, Johns Hopkins didn't allow fans into their game during the tournament. And it's like, Oh boy, like what's going to happen with our game. Um, what was that whole week like, uh, you know, that uncertainty and like, are we going to play? Can our parents come? What, what was that like for you? So to be quite honest, we, we hadn't really heard anything about um, our specific tournament games uh, getting canceled or whether fans would be allowed or not. Uh, so we were pretty much going about uh, business as usual. Uh, we were focusing on what we could control, um, uh, focusing on getting better and improving. And then once the news broke uh, with, uh, well, once Landry broke the news to us that uh, uh, the, the tournament had been just canceled uh, and that we wouldn't have any more games, um, it, was, it was like a punch in the gut. I mean, we had worked all season, all year long, really, to, to really reach our goals. And we were getting to that level. Uh, we had grown much, much closer over the year. Um, the team meeting that we had uh, directly after we found out uh, really helped uh, like helped us realize it was something bigger than basketball, bigger than ourselves. Um, and it helped us sort of face it with, with gratitude, uh, being grateful for the season that we did have, being grateful for the opportunity for, for the opportunity that we had been given to come closer and really play a high level of basketball all season long. Um, and we, we didn't really hang our heads as much as um, it did suck because we did want to keep on playing uh, and we did want to try and reach uh, that national championship game and win the national championship. Um, walking out of there with an appreciation for what we had been able to accomplish and an appreciation for one another and what we had been through uh, really sort of helped shape, I guess, honestly, uh, helped shape my, my perspective throughout all of COVID, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like the stepping stone to uh, my attitude towards the last, at this point, 18 months. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's really good to hear. And that's really important, I think. Yeah. 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 And big, big props to, to our coaches and to the rest of the team for, uh, for the, that heart to heart conversation that we had. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So the cancellation happens. Did you end up, did you go home? What did you end up doing after that? So, uh, we, we spent, uh, the last couple of days, uh, after that cancellation, I think it was, uh, two or three days on campus, uh, just enjoying each other's company, um, uh, enjoying the rest of spring break. And then we packed up and, and pretty much everyone went their separate ways and went home. Um, and I was, even with the disappointment of, um, of the cancellation and of having to leave school, uh, I, I was really looking forward to seeing uh, my parents and my brother because, I mean, the reality of the matter with our season starting in October uh, and not ending till uh, late March, April, uh, we get a shortened winter break and a shortened fall break, and then we normally don't get a spring break. And so getting to spend uh, at least that initial chunk of uh, quality time uh, with, with my parents and my brother, um, was honestly something I was really looking forward to. It was time I hadn't had with them since, uh, since I was in high school. Yeah. Hmm. That's really good to hear. Mm -hmm. I know I've, I've seen them at games before. I know they're big swap <laughs> basketball fans, <laughs> big fans. Yeah. It's, it's a two and a half hour drive, uh, at most normally from Maryland up to SWAT. So, uh, they try to make as many games as possible. And then obviously we have games at Hopkins and uh, McDaniel and uh, Gettysburg, which are also pretty close. So yeah, they try to make it as uh, to as many games as possible. It's, it's great to see them in the stands always. That's cool. Um, so you finished out the rest of the school year virtually. Um, then you decided to take a gap year. What, uh, what kind of went into the, the decision to, to sit out for the year? So uh, I was not a huge fan of online classes. Um, Sitting in front of a screen was really not uh, uh, something I, I looked forward to, especially after like having the opportunity at SWAT to really like 
be in class and be engaged. Um, and then uh, when SWAT announced that uh, sports seasons would be canceled for, for the 2020, uh, 2021 school year, uh, they, they announced it surprisingly early. It was uh, June, July at that point. Um, and that was another like sucker punch. Uh, that, that was uh, another like, wow, like another season just, or the season just gone before it even started. But um, I'm honestly kind of grateful that SWAT announced as early as they did because that in conjunction with uh, the classes being online and then uh, the limited capacity uh, for students on campus uh, helped me sort of make the decision uh, that I wanted to take uh, the year off and pursue other opportunities to, to maintain eligibility for basketball and also to, to sort of wait until classes at SWAT looked a little bit uh, more normal and housing looked uh, a little bit more normal. Yeah. Well, and you got to do some really cool things during your gap year. Uh, what can you tell me about some of those things that you did? Oh, I, I'm, I, I am incredibly grateful for the, for the experiences I had. Uh, in the fall, um, I, I was invited to go on a cross country road trip with a couple of friends from SWAT. And uh, so we actually drove from Washington, DC to uh, Colorado and uh, sort of stayed in Colorado and then took uh, trips to the national parks uh, in and around Colorado. So uh, we went to Black Canyon of the Gunnison, we went to Arches uh, and Zion and Bryce in Utah. We went to uh, Yellowstone and the Tetons up in uh, Wyoming. Um, and being able to really sort of spend that time out in nature after being cooped up for six months at that point. I mean, it was incredibly, incredibly refreshing. I mean, uh, being able to hike and visit these like amazing places that I'd only seen pictures of and to really be able to like experience it myself. I mean, couldn't have asked for, for a better way uh, to spend the fall. Um, and then once uh, that opportunity came to a close, um, uh, I got to enjoy uh, some time like for the winter uh, back at home with, uh, with my parents and my brother. Uh, without really much to do. So it was uh, a lot of like quality time with them. Um, my parents are both teachers uh, and my brother's still in school. So, I mean, we were all pretty much in the house um, at that point. So it was a lot, a lot of uh, family time, which was very, very nice. And then uh, I, I live like 40 minutes away from uh, both Baltimore and DC. And uh, when I was uh, a kid, uh, I used to visit, uh, when I lived in Mexico and visited family in the US here in Maryland, uh, we would go to the Baltimore Aquarium every single time because it was, I mean, amazing, uh, the National Aquarium in Baltimore. And so uh, I was looking for opportunities for the spring, wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. I was actually heavily considering uh, going back uh, to SWAT and taking classes. Um, and I saw that, uh, the aquarium in Baltimore was offering internships. And so I applied and uh, it ended up working out. I ended up uh, getting an internship uh, with the marine mammals. So working with the, uh, with the dolphins in Baltimore. And so um, that was an experience in and of itself. I am incredibly, incredibly grateful. And uh, honestly, it was an astounding opportunity. Uh, what, what, I guess what kind of fascinated me about the dolphins since I was a little kid was they're like high levels of intelligence. Um, my thought had always been, Oh, like we can communicate and we like have all these, like all this like intelligence that we've put to good use, but to see that there's like other organisms on like the planet that can communicate and can work together and do all these like different things. Mm. I was just, and, and can learn was, I mean, amazing and so uh we got to we got to work with them we got to train them we were we were basically in charge of their uh entire well-being uh feeding them uh prepping everything uh enrichment sessions uh teaching them new behaviors um and being able to sort of like build that bond with each individual dolphin over the course of the three months i mean you walk in as a complete and total stranger and they, they don't trust you. They're like, they're, I mean, they, it's basically um, who's, who's this random guy that just 
walked in, just showed up today. And then when you're there day in, day out over the course of three months, I mean, slowly but surely they start getting used to your presence. And then uh, you start interacting with them and they, they learn to trust you. And uh, by the end of it, I mean, you pretty much uh, were having a nonverbal con uh, like conversation with, with the dolphin. I mean, uh, all these different, uh, uh, it's, they're called SDs. Uh, it's uh, basically like a, a hand signal that, that's uh, correlated with a behavior. Uh, it's all, the, the theory behind training dolphins is fascinating. It's all, it's all um, conditioning, uh, kind of like with Pavlov's dogs, but um, that's the uh, theory behind the training and being able to see how that's implemented uh, to where the dolphins can learn a behavior uh, and associate it with a particular movement or a particular like, uh, like, like hand motion um, was, was amazing. And so at that point, you're, you're waving your hand and they're doing the, the, the correct behavior. And uh, you start to build that trust, build that trust, build that trust. Um, and I mean, you wind up having this hugely positive relationship with honestly, like an animal that we can't really communicate with because uh, it's not, it's not verbal whatsoever. I mean, it's all uh, like visual and under, and you have to find ways to understand one another. And uh, I mean, it was just truly, truly uh, amazing and fulfilling. And yeah, it was, it was honestly very cool. Uh, yeah. It sounds incredible. What, yeah. um, what would, is there a specific instance that you can think of that you were like, wow, this is like the smartest thing I've seen this dolphin do or like anything that just like blew your mind. Like, yeah. So, um, the, the, the group of dolphins at the aquarium consists of four females and two males. Uh, one of the males, his name is Bo. Um, and fr from the start, I kinda, I kinda sort of felt a little bit of a connection with Bo. I mean, he, he's the, uh, the, uh, the longest dolphin, uh of the pod uh and i mean me being tall and playing basketball like i kind of said out like we're kind of one in the same right um but he he had a, a happy-go-lucky personality and uh, was great to work with and one day um my mentor was working with him um and he wasn't really paying attention he was uh sort of drifting away and uh taking laps uh wasn't really engaging with her and so she said well come on over like give it a shot and uh, I stepped right up and he was incredibly attentive and sitting like straight up. And he was like following my every move and like doing the correct behaviors and everything. And it was like, wow, like I was just able to uh, pick up a dolphin and connect with him. And we were able to work together and make it a successful training session. I mean, that was, that was, I mean, mind blowing to think like this dolphin who I met two months ago at this point trusts me enough to, to work with me, um, to make this a, a positive session. It was, it was that, that was, I think the highlight of my time at the aquarium. Yeah. Very cool. Did you, uh, teach them how to play basketball at all? <laughs> uh, honestly, they, they kind of knew how to play basketball already. When I got there, I, I have a couple of videos and, uh, and pictures, uh, that I sent Landry, but, um, for, for enrichment sessions, we, we had, they had all sorts of toys, balls, stuff like that. Um, and there were a couple of, not more than a couple, there were tons of instances where uh, we were doing like underwater observations and uh, Bo or Foster or Chesapeake or Jade would be balancing one of the balls against the bottom of the, uh, uh, of the pool and just like basically dribbling, uh, <laughs> dribbling, 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 dribbling. And it's like, wow, like, I mean, Bo's, I think 105 inches long, which, uh, and it's like, well, I mean, we could use a point guard that's like nine feet tall, might be long, right? That's very cool. Let me end with this and ask you, what is it that you are most looking forward to uh, coming back to Swarthmore this year? I think, it, I think it comes down to three things. Um, we, we have a, an incredibly, incredibly tight knit team and uh, it's been tough. I mean, we're, we're all sort of spread out around the country. Some of us have been able to live together at, uh, at different points, but being able to be all together once again, uh, 18 strong, uh, 23 strong with like the coaching staff um, and really just get to be with one another. Uh, I'm, I think that's the thing I'm most looking forward to. Um, and then 
getting back to class and learning every day. Um, I've, it's been a different type of learning that I've been doing uh, this year with, with uh, spending the time in nature and then uh, at the aquarium and here at camp. So uh, getting back into the classroom um, and getting back to playing basketball. I mean, basketball is just a ton, a ton of fun. Uh, and I can't imagine my time at school without it. So uh, getting back out onto the court, uh, seeing Tarball, uh, new three-point lines and everything. Yeah, that's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Swarthmore Athletics Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, leave us a five-star review, and share it with your friends.